What's up everyone, I'm Coach K and we're going to look at how this market's about to react this week. We're going to look at Bitcoin, we're going to look at why I still think that we're going to dump, we're going to look at possibilities before that happens, we're also going to look into a new project and an older project that's also quite new, one being meme and how the heck that's going and, if, and we'll look at a little bit into NFTs today and how they work and why I think they have a big potential, as well as a new project that I'll reveal at the end of this video. So don't go anywhere, click on that like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a second. Back in the, back, back in the. Hey everyone, hope you guys have had a great weekend. My name is Vladimir, and today we're going to look at Bitcoin. Now we're not actually going to talk to Vladimir, we're going to look at exactly what is going on with Bitcoin and why I said this week is going to be the week where we dump and now we're starting to see some factors play out that I'm going to show you some added things that I've added over the weekend at Coach's Corner. If you're not in there, at Coach's Corner on Telegram, join. You can get all this stuff live because obviously these videos are not. Now, jumping in to this, we got to look at what's been going on with Bitcoin. Now, there was things that I pointed out over the weekend. First thing that I'm going to talk about is this TD9. So we had this uh, TD sequential nine pop up and usually when there's a nine it reverses it went a couple extra days we tap this level for the fake out we tap this level for the fake out and then we dumped down and held which area I'll just move this out of the way this 21 day EMA I said in my group that if we break this level this 21 day EMA we don't hammer off of it we're likely to see this dump well, we still did have a bearish engulfing candlestick. It closed below the open of this candle. So we had that. We also had what I've been talking about, this bearish TK cross happen. Now we have a bear cross. We closed below the Kijin on the daily yesterday. And we're still technically right now underneath it today. Right? And so what I could see happening here is that we might go sideways or maybe pump up to this level one more time and then we're gonna start to see the dump. So this will probably happen not maybe today, maybe tomorrow or the next. It could be one of those bloody Tuesday, bloody Wednesdays that are coming. But keep your eyes on that because we definitely could go retest this high that we had here um, and then dump. But I'm watching it. I don't see the volume. As you guys see, the volume has still been dropping over the weekend. And that, that told me when it was rising as, as it dropped that that was probably going to diverge and we'd have a, a dump. And we did have a dump all the way almost to 70, uh, 10, 7. And then we reversed and came back up. So if we do drop below the 21 day EMA, you might be one of those people doing this <laughs> at the amusement park. <laughs> so we would likely see it drop right down very fast. As we say in crypto, Takes a while to get up to the top, but we drop like an elevator. And I, I think we could see that at least come to this level and fill this gap down here and maybe even go lower to really give that max pain feel at around 88, which I've been talking about before. We also have some pretty good support at 9,050. So come all the way down there. People feel max pain. A lot of the guys are shorted, um, or sorry, that long too late, that get too bullish out of nowhere. If we do fake out one more time, we'll probably get wrecked. And there's still people who are long that believe. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Like I do see a potential of us going a little higher first. But I know that within the next week, we're going to see this dump. And I've been preparing for it. So should you. And the way to prepare for it is either go into a low leverage short. If you're someone who's not a leverage trader, a 1x or 2x leverage short. And if you are a leverage trader, well, you know what to do already. And if you're just scared of shorting the market, go into USDT, secure your capital. Looking at Bitcoin on our gap, obviously our gap was filled within a couple seconds because we pretty much opened right around that level of around 10,800. We filled that gap and now we're still we're holding that Kijin. Well, we, if second we lose this Kijin on here as well because we're underneath the 21 day EMA, uh, things get a little bit ugly. BLX similar type of chart there as well and we have that negative bearish TK cross and what I'm looking at is stocks right now and where is the stock market going and what did I say would happen I had that arrow drawn to the 618 last week just removed it 
look what we're seeing here. We've lost the Kijin. We've had three really nasty days. The four nasty days, four days of red. We might see a day of green in here at some point to retest this level. We broke below and then go down lower. But this is not looking very good. The stock market will also lead the crypto market. And as a total market cap, I'm going to show you guys today, is not doing really well. Bitcoin's kind of just in limbo here. It's not really breaking this level. It's not really like going below it. But Bitcoin's looking a little bit more like the dominance is coming back potentially, but not really there yet. It's not really strong. The then, As I said, the volume is going down while the price action is going up. So watch that as well. Now, Ethereum, I've been saying it's going to dump, it's going to dump, it's going to dump. It's been holding and holding and holding the Kijin, holding, holding, holding the 21-day EMA, losing and holding and losing and holding. Eventually, this is going to cause a dump. We'll get this dump that I expected there. It's going to come and it's going to happen at some point soon. Just have to be patient for that to happen because we do have, again, tomorrow or the day after an impending bearish TK cross will happen here and then we'll likely see this have our perfect setup especially where the chiku is below the candlesticks let me just turn off the, the td sequential here to show you our chiku span is bearish right we're above the cloud but if we have a tk cross to the negative side and we enter this cloud on a bear on a bearish another bearish engulfing candlestick or just a very strong candle we're going to go to the bottom of this cloud whether it be to three thousand three three hundred and thirty two dollars all the way down to 311 but we're going to do an edge to edge potentially if that happens and it's very much looking like that could happen so be prepared for that as well and if you're not this is how it feels when you're not prepared for the bitcoin ethereum and other dumps it's okay it's okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay okay remember if you fail to plan you plan to fail so you choose which person you are you could be a or you could be B. Who do you want to be? The happy guy or the sad guy? You choose. Let's look at gold. We see that, you know, it's uh, it doesn't look super bullish, but it could be in a flag formation. We have lower highs, but higher lows. So keep your eye on gold. Obviously, it depends on what this one does, our DXY. Does the DXY keep holding this Tenkin, which I said we would likely tap? Or do we eventually break above and go and get up a little bit higher and then we'll see you know max pain on the markets even more so because people are exiting markets to go into dollars also with oil we see that starting to dump as well so i'm keeping my eye on a lot of different factors here but what i want you guys to start to look at is total crypto market cap like people are excited about the market right now and we're still in infancy 329 billion dollars is nothing microsoft has five times the market cap of that pretty much as a one company, <laughs> so we're talking a whole industry. So we're very much in the infantile stage still. But look what we see here on there. We have another bearish TK cross. We have a bearish Chiku span on the whole market. This is a whole market overview. So I'm seeing bearish signs for the market to see another corrective movement. And so this shouldn't be something you're scared of. It should be something you're prepared for because you can make money on the way down too. And also total market cap, people would say, oh, alts are super bullish. Well, not really. I mean, they, they don't look very much different than the rest of the market. Bitcoin doesn't look any crazier or better than this. This could break down easily and come to, to this, you know, this level. So keep your eyes ready. Keep your USDT safe. You know, don't go too heavy in the market right now. It would be highly frowned upon if it was me personally. I'd frown at myself. The market doesn't look great. Uni doesn't look great either. I told one of my friends to sell the other day at $8.50. He told me he sold all of it because I was trying to get him to take his initial out of Uni because he put all of it in at $2. I said, yeah, take your profit. And he actually took all of his profit, made a cool half a million dollars. And now today it's $5 and he's very happy that he did that. <laughs> so that's a success story of over the weekend. And Neo, watch for that because Flamingo is coming out. Anyways, let's jump in and look at one of these coins that make us all excited and giddy. What coin is that? It's sharing. Now, sharing came out and said, yes, we're part of BSN. Yes, we are going on to two new major exchanges. And yes, they had a dump. And this dump was created by someone who put one sharing order at really, really low prices and manipulated this. Probably caused some people to panic sell um, to make buy orders for them because we don't have a lot of liquidity on a bit hum and we're not having a lot of liquidity on much many other exchanges no one's really selling 
it. So when I'm trying to buy it, I have to buy it in very small chunks. <laughs> but that's just how it is right now. And uh, I am personally trying to accumulate up 2 million because that's how much it is to run a node for sharing. And I think, as you guys can probably tell, it's going to be a big project. Now, looking at uh, the predictions from Token Metrics, if you guys haven't checked it out and you want to simplify your life as a trader, look at tokenmetrics.com. I have a link in the description. Do click on that and take a look around. It will really help you with your research, your understanding of the market, and a lot of data that will help you, you know, better invest for yourself and understand the projects that you're going into and why you're even in them. Let's look at Bitcoin's prediction. It did kind of have it going a little bit lower before. It's uh, leveled off a bit, and now it looks like by the middle of end of October, we're going to see an uptick. So we could see definitely that move down and then start to come back up by the mid of August, which October, sorry, which very much fits what I'm talking about. And Ethereum still is a very similar chart around 330, which coincided with what I talked about just a few minutes ago. This coin is just absolutely insane. This is meme, okay? And meme started out in August. My friend told me pick up some meme. I said, why? It's a meme. It's kind of silly. Yeah, it's up 24,000% from the bottom. So, yeah. Let's leave it there. A couple ETH in that one would have made just some nice profits. <laughs> and it just keeps going. So, meme, keep your eyes on it. They got the NFT space. And this is the, something that I want to talk to you guys about. NFTs are going to be massive. In Canada, for example, you sell crypto, right? You have to pay tax. But if you buy an NFT, right? Let's say you buy a 500 Ethereum NFT. Well, guess what? When you sell that, it's not taxable. So, this is something that I think people will use to divert taxation because an NFT is a collectible, collector's item. It is not technically a trade. So, this is something that may be used in the future to benefit people not having to pay as astronomical um, fees for tax. But we also see the project that I'm on as a team member that is doing yield farming, NFTs, and gamification of different games to play, um, you know, these things are going to blow up. And I'm, not, I'm saying that obviously a little bit biased because I have a project that's doing this, but we're taking the best of the best. And um, I'll let you guys know about it as we get closer to letting the public have more insight. And now it's time for Obit, the coin you never knew about. Yes, this is my voice. Yes, I can do that. Um, yeah, of course, this is me too. <laughs> okay, a lot of people have asked me in, in VIP, what is Obit? How do I use it? What's it? I don't understand it. So let me make it really simple for you guys today and do a really quick overview of this project and why I think it's going to be a big one that no one's talked about yet because it's, this is like why I talk about these projects because no one's talking about them yet. So Obit is a really interesting platform which returns more money than you normally get by giving transaction fees back to the users. For example, right now you hold gold in your wallet on your phone, right? It's linked to your TD Ameritrade, for example. Now, do you make anything if the gold goes up or down? Yes, you do, depending on if you're long or short. You hold, if you just hold gold and it goes up, you make money that way. What happens if I told you everyone else that trades gold would actually add value to yours on top of what gold does by itself alone? So you actually have a way to make more profit. So this is why they talk about 75% of additional user gains can be made in simulations by literally just using this DAP, by using Obit. How they do that is really interesting. It's a network effect. So literally, there's tons of transactions all the time. And if we have thousands of transactions going on in the network, think about how that works. We have thousands of network transactions and 80% of those transactions, let's say it's a dollar per transaction, go back to you. Over a year, that's going to add up, especially if you're holding something like gold, which people are going to actively trade. So how they've done this is made it so that you gain extra capital by literally just holding your normal stocks, gold, etc., that are going to be on Obit's DAP, okay? And so you actually can make profit on every single trade. This is not a meme. This is not a meme coin. It's something real using decentralized finance at its finest, redistributing revenues, um, and growing its user base based off getting more people on it. How does mass adoption happen? Well, if I know that every one of my friends that trades gold and trades stocks can use Obit and they can make profit by other people using 
you know, their ecosystem, why would they keep it on TD Ameritrade? Why wouldn't they put it onto something like Obit and make profit from everyone else in the network? All of everyone basically makes profit by the trading that happens on the network. So it's a very interesting model, something that's very giving and very much what you need for mass adoption. But look at the team members they have. Now, just to go over this before going in, they have Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Credit Suisse, Morgan Stanley, IBM, Prudential, and many others that have worked in, in different industries on their actual uh, team and their mass amount of advisors. They don't just have a few. They have very many that have worked in various industries and that add so much more value over time. I will leave in the description a uh, link to the deck and, and the white paper so you guys can check it out in more detail. But this is why I think Obic has a huge opportunity in the space and you know doing something a little bit different but very highly valuable. And I hear that they have some big partnerships lined up and things like that as well. So take a look at it. Remember, do your own research. I'm just giving you an overview. I will let you guys you know, check the links below and decide for yourself what works. But Obit, I think, is going to be one of those projects that comes out of nowhere, kind of, and does some big stuff. And so that's why I think it's a really cool one to check out and why I'm talking about it before you see anything online really anywhere. And that's why I like to talk about them so you guys know first. That's what my community does. All right, that is all for today. My name is Coach K. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to like and subscribe. We did go over Bitcoin and Ethereum, when we likely will see these dumps, and potentially we could see a little pump before that happens, but we're definitely going on the downward trajectory, so do not take high amounts of risk. We looked at sharing and how it's kind of on a on a nice little even keel right now and that definitely is a long-term play so don't feel sad if it went down a little bit this is definitely one of the projects i did not sell i try to accumulate on every dip but it's hard because not many people are selling and then we looked at a little bit into token metrics if you guys want to look and get more acquainted do click on the link below check it out if it works for you great if not I will tell you how it does. No, I'm just joking, but do check it out. It's a great platform. We looked at meme coin and where is this going? Where are NFTs going? I think way on the up, up, and it will be the next trend in crypto after DeFi kind of fizzles a little bit. And then we looked at Obit and why this project could blow your minds and also blow up your profitability by just holding the normal stuff you like holding, but in their DAP and a way for you to get transactional volume of fees coming back to you and adding more value to the assets that you already hold. So you guys have a great day. I'm Coach K. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Back, you know, back, back, you know.